Hello and welcome to a very special whiteboard training video. I want to talk to you about the truth about PhD salaries, okay? So if you're a PhD student, a postdoc, you don't get a salary, okay? You probably think you get a salary, but you get a stipend, a fellowship, whatever it might be. If you go on to be an adjunct, a professor, maybe you call it a salary, but guess what? It's so little, so small to, to be compared against what you could be making in industry that you shouldn't even call it a salary. Now, for those of you that are PhD students, postdocs, maybe you're working for free, maybe you're unemployed, I'm going to talk about this and I want you to look at it. I want you to look at the math. Why? Because right now you are accepting so much less for yourself. You're giving yourself an excuse to stay in academia when you should be mapping out your transition to industry. We're not in the 1970s anymore, okay? PhDs in academia are not respected. They're not even rare. There's an overabundance of them. You have piled up. Universities now are breaking. They're shutting down their PhD pipelines. It's not good news for you to see a university uh, stop taking in PhDs and to push out tenured professors. That's the beginning and the end of the pipeline. What do you think they're going to do next? They're already doing it. They're cutting out postdocs. They're cutting out even PhD students. You're next. If you keep waiting around, the entire pipeline of higher education is crumbling. And I'm going to tell you why in my fifth point here. But first, I want you to take a look at this. 21,570. 21,570. What does that mean? It's a number you've likely never seen before. It's the actual average worldwide salary of postdocs. The National Science Foundation, a lot of other publications, in their methodologies, if you actually read them, uh, they count, number one, they count postdocs as in employment. It's not. You can go to the government. It's a training position. It's not employment, okay? It's underemployment at best. PhD unemployment rates are way higher. We're talking 60% of PhDs after they graduate ending up unemployed. 80% of life science PhDs ending up unemployed. Where, where are those numbers? Why are those numbers so high? Because a postdoc's a training position. That's why you can get on government assistance or uh, food stamps for being a postdoc. Now, if you look at that same methodology section of these studies, they exclude postdoc salary data from countries where they pay postdocs less than $10,000. That's not fair. You can't compare a postdoc academic salary to industry salary and exclude the lowest numbers in academia. This is the actual average. And it makes sense, even in first world countries, countries like the US, for example, that pay Postdocs supposedly better. Even Nature, Nature report reports postdoc salaries as low as $23,660. What are you doing? Did you know that universities are fighting with governments to prevent postdocs from getting overtime pay? Nobody in academia has your best interest at heart. You probably know somebody or you yourself are working for free for your PI or a lab or a classroom. You're working for free, but if you asked your PI or a professor to give you some of their salary to compensate you, there's no way they're going to do it, right? So let's see how altruistic they really are if you ask them to do that. You've got to look, start looking out for your career, not your PI's career, not your professor's career. Okay, number three, did you know there's 100,000 plus postdocs that they could find that are, are report, reported just in the US, UK, and Europe. 100,000 people in this position. Okay, these numbers are awful. 20,000, this is the poverty level. I'm not even going to count PhD students, and some of you PhD students are staying in for years. You're staying in academia for years as cheap labor. The average PhD, if you count interdisciplinary PhDs, it's like six plus years is the average as a PhD student, and they keep elongating it because you're cheap labor. Let's look at a simple math equation, okay? According to science, PhDs worldwide in industry, worldwide, get an average of $91,112 per year. According to Nature, okay, postdocs, this is, I'm just taking the U.S. here. I'm not even taking the 21570 I told you about. I'm taking a higher postdoc salary in the U.S. just to even make it a little bit, uh, uh, make the numbers reasonable for you in case you happen to be a lucky postdoc getting anywhere close to this per year. 47500 according to Nature, that's the median. That's the median for the U.S., Okay, worldwide, again, is actually closer to 20,000, but we'll, we'll use this. Multiply both by seven years, okay? The average postdoc length now, six to 10 years. The average postdoc length, people are chasing postdocs. 
or they're changing the postdoc name because it looks bad for the university to uh, research associate, whatever it is. They're, they're playing games. Okay, but seven, seven years. Take that seven years for both of those salaries. What do you get? You get $637,784 over that seven-year period in industry. In academia, you get $332,500. The difference, over $300,000 difference. So you're thinking, oh, I'm staying in academia, gonna do my postdoc, it's gonna help my career. By the way, nature, nature biotechnology, science, cell have all confirmed that doing a postdoc damages your career in government, nonprofit, industry, even in academic non-tenure positions. And there's no tenure positions anymore. A postdoc is damaging your career. You have to accept that. People look at you doing a postdoc and they see you as wasting your career. They see you as cheap labor. 18% to 21%. 14% to 21% revenue loss since the pandemic. Okay, what does that mean for higher education? What does that mean for higher education? No revenue. That's a, that's a 14 to 21% loss in funding for PhD programs. Why do you think they're pushing out tenured professors? Why do you think that you're seeing the walls closing in on academia? It's not because grant funding's low. It's because the revenue that they're getting, you know, undergrads, why do undergraduate tuitions keep skyrocketing? Why do they keep going up? Because they have to prop up a broken system of higher education. 13% of university employees have been cut in the U.S. alone. That's over 650,000. You've seen the furloughs. You've seen the cuts across the board, especially in higher education. Why is this happening? Even the, the labor is so cheap and they're still having to cut people. Put two and two together. If you're in academia, you're in trouble. You have to transition out, okay? I want you to start making a plan for transitioning out. We're gonna be talking next week, Thursday. It's gonna be March 4th, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're gonna do a webinar, public webinar, on interviewing in the job search process. I'll put a link to it on this video. Make sure you check it out, sign up for the webinar, get early access. Remember your value as a PhD. You're valuable in industry, but not in academia. Start thinking and acting like a successful industry professional.